Hi, it's me again. After absolutely nuking the last video with positive feedback, you people made it pretty clear to my two last brain cells that I should keep making these videos. So I'm gonna do that. It's a series now. This is your fault. Welcome to... I want to gradually increase how advanced of a creator you have to be with every new video the series gets. I want to cover the basics and then go to more advanced things like why the editor endlessly torments my solo with bugs and glitches so bad that even my sleep paralysis demon feels bad for me. Or glow. Friends, let's talk gameplay. This might seem obvious to all of you, but self-reflecting never hurts. So why is good gameplay important? Think of it this way. Imagine that creating a level is like building a house. There's crappy houses, there's kind of small houses, but usually every house shares the same three things. The fundament, the concrete skeleton, and the facade, the decorations. Now imagine that the fundament it stands on is the song, the concrete skeleton is the gameplay you make for your level, and the facade is how you decorate that level. If any one of these three things sucks just half as much as I do at being a normal functioning human... What the fuck is this? What the f- oh, is what? The entire house is gonna break down quicker than you think. So, I have tons of people always asking me how to make good gameplay. The honest answer is that there is no one universal way to make good gameplay. Gameplay, just like art, is subjective. Everyone enjoys a different way of playing the game. There's no strat book or task list a creator can use to always nail gameplay perfectly. It is just like decorating. Subjective. Make what you enjoy playing. If you don't enjoy playing very difficult, hard timing wave game modes, don't do it. Those are trash. Fuck them. Throw them out the window. The world has no place for you. However, what I'm gonna try and do here today is give you guys guidance. Some points that you can always hold on to and keep in your head when making gameplay to maybe better understand what makes gameplay feel good or fun or satisfying and so on. At the end of the day, it's all about making someone enjoy playing your level. If it's difficult, if it's unique, if it's special, it doesn't matter. It's all about enjoyment. Which brings me to the first thing I really want to go into. Organizing yourself. You've found a song you really enjoy, and you want to make a level with it. This is the point where you should be asking yourself, what exactly do I want to make? There's so many things you could try, ranging from extremely difficult gameplay that focuses around the challenge of playing something really hard, or maybe fun, easy demons that focus on being awesome little challenges that are super fun to play and reward the player with a demon completion. Some might even be extra nostalgic and go for an auto level. I haven't seen a good one of these in a good while. The fact is that there's hundreds of ways for you to make gameplay and it's all about finding out what you want to do with your song. Just make sure you know exactly what you want to do and what you want out of your level before you start making gameplay for it. This can include finding out the difficulty and length of your level. How long do you want it to drag on? What perfectly resembles the best parts of the song? Or do you use the entire song? Finding out what kind of feeling the song gives you. If the song is intense and fast paced, you might want to choose to use a lot of intense and fast gameplay too. You want to reflect the song in the gameplay. Choosing interesting gameplay quirks that repeatedly happen to give the player some sort of consistency on what to expect. Like tilted straight flying, quick gameplay switches, slope gameplay where you won't find a single 90 degree angle. All of these are valid gameplay quirks that you could choose to emphasize the song and make your level stand out for following the theme, for doing something special and unique. All of these tips are important things I always think about while making my own gameplay. And people always say that I make fun gameplay. Right? Your gameplay is a load of garbage.
the next thing I want to talk about is the no invisible oomph things rule. There's a reason I call them invisible oomph things. Because every time I die to them, oomph. <laughs> Oomph is the only sound that comes out of my mouth. I already touched on this subject a bit in the last video, in Know Your Editor episode one, where I talked about five mistakes that I see new creators make. Visible obstacles. I don't know exactly why people do it. What I mean by this is sometimes when you play a level and the creator doesn't seem to know how to stop a gameplay bug or a skip in the gameplay to stop from happening, what they do is they just put an invisible spike there or just an invisible obstacle that you cannot see. So this will lead to a lot of players just dying to random invisible things which they had no idea of seeing. <laughs> I swear, A2 Marble, what, is, what the fuck is this? Please don't do this. If there's one thing people keep doing wrong, it's forgetting the fact that your gameplay is supposed to be a challenge. It's a game after all. I know that there's memory demons and stuff out there that is supposed to challenge the aspect of not knowing what killed you, but when it comes to just general gameplay, if you're not going for a memory demon, please, Always make sure that when a player dies, the player sees, all right, that thing right there is what killed me and nothing else. I didn't die to an invisible thing. I didn't die to a bug or an unintended behavior. I died because I didn't press a button. I died because I didn't hold it long enough. I died because I got the timing wrong. Make sure that the player can blame it on himself. This just overall leads to a less frustrating playing experience when people see why they die. They at least know what they did wrong. The next thing I want you to think about is flow. What does flow mean, you might ask? Basically, imagine gameplay being a constant flow of actions. Just like a river has a constant flow of water, you will never see water flow up a waterfall or suddenly do a 148 degree turn out of nowhere. That's because every movement water makes affects what happens after it. If I send a player through a ship portal, the ship portal is probably gonna carry over the momentum from the jump and continue moving in this direction. And that is really important. Breaking the flow of gameplay like this, or like this, It's just, I don't know. It feels just as wrong as the 3D in my solo level. <laughs> Flow can be broken though, in very rare cases when the music tells you to. And this is where we get to the next point of this video. Sync. This is probably going to be the most difficult part to understand from this video. Syncing your gameplay is one of the most important things you can do. Making your song feel connected to your gameplay and level makes everything feel so much better. As if every movement that the player has to make is now connected to the song. They are playing the song. How does one sync though? If I'm honest with you, that's a very, very hard question to answer. So instead, I'll show you. If you guys want to see me build that gameplay you just saw, just hang around for the next five minutes and I'll be basically showing off my thought process and showing off some small tips and tricks that I use to make a gameplay like this. I've prepared a little thing here for us. Uh, there's currently absolutely nothing in this level. The only thing that, the only thing that I have done is choose the song and build this little structure with a start position at the drop. Before we build anything though, I'm going to show you guys a little trick that you can use to make syncing things to the song easier. And you will find it right in here on the song. You can come to create lines in the bottom left corner. So in here we will set the offset to 50. I just put it to 50 because I want the song to start earlier to the part that we are decorating. Then you just hit this record button. And what that is going to do is it is going to play the song. Now what you can do is tap to the beat of the song and that will then create lines in the editor for you that will basically show you where those taps happened. I'm gonna do that right now for you guys to show you exactly what I mean. And if you look in the editor now, you will be able to see we now have all of these orange lines that appeared out of nowhere. And what they are basically synced to, if you listen, we now have sync lines that we can use. So of course, you're always gonna have human offsets, meaning not, not every one of these lines is perfect, but it's, you can still use it 
to, for example, put down a, a speed changer. And if the line is perfectly in the middle of the speed changer, you know you did it right. So, basically, this is all that it shows us. And it's very, very helpful. Something that I always like doing is giving all of the portals a bit of transparency. For example, I'm gonna get this off a trigger here and give all of these group one. That's, what that's gonna do is it's gonna make them transparent, meaning when the player plays the level, it's gonna be more visible, making it easier to play. What I want you guys to do is listen to the song. Listen to the song and see if you can imagine or hear out any specific noises that you can really emphasize with the gameplay. What I mean by that is, for example, the thing that we did here with the, the gameplay changes, uh, the, the gameplay speed changes. And that creates a really cool illusion in my opinion. For example, the first hit of the song, of the drop specifically, should always be emphasized since that is usually the strongest hit. So what we do is we make it fast, the second hit is less fast. So we have a cool little thing here. You can also rotate that, but be really, really careful. When you rotate speed changes, make sure that you have them go up as far as you can and go down as far as you can. Because the last thing you want is for it to be always different how the player hits this portal. If the player hits this portal a bit later, coming from a bit of a higher standpoint, it will make the level of sync and you can basically counterwork that by making a line of these speed changes and literally just coming along and making all of these invisible so that the player can't see them. So basically there's no way for anything to go off sync now. We can come along and emphasize the second hit in the song. For example like this. So we basically have bang, bang and then here we have upwards motion with the player. So what I like, really, I really, really love doing this, is either you grab a ball portal. So I came up with this. This is already a really good attempt, I think, at just syncing things in general. It has some visual errors like this one, where we would ha probably have to move the speed changer down. But other than that, I think stuff like this is already perfect. You don't need to do more to sync things up. This is like the first step of putting down what you want from your level. Look at this. Two thousand years later. All right, so after around 10 minutes, this is kind of what I came up with. Uh, every time I heard a, a noise in the song, what I did is I tried either syncing player input to the level, or I tried syncing something visual to the level. There's two types of sync. Number one is visual sync, and number two is actually player-based sync, where you have to press a button, and you pressing that button is synced with the beat of the song. Now, the gameplay that I made here is mainly focused on the, the second one of those, the player-based sync. Uh, really, nothing special, just very quick, came up with something, just to show you guys how easy it is to make good, fun gameplay, in my opinion. Very easy, very quick, very fun. I had so much fun making that and I had so much fun playing it. It's, it's just, making gameplay is not that hard as long as you are enjoying yourself and as long as you're having fun. Very, very simple stuff right there. As you can see, it feels very synced up to the music. The gameplay changes happen to the music. You have to click the mouse to the music. It feels like the song is now embedded within your level. This is what I wanted to show you guys. With that, we basically have everything covered that I do or focus on or that I use to make my own gameplay. I really hope that I could at least teach one of you something in this video today. I put a lot of effort into this video. I hope that it really showed. If you want to support me, the best thing you can do is either just share this video with people you might think it would help or maybe check out my Twitch page where I, where I stream building and creating but also playing when I would also teach building while streaming. I hope all of you have an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you all so much for making me able to do this. Thank you to my Discord server for making that fun, awesome little joke video skit in the middle of this video. But yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow while streaming. Take care. Have a good day. Keep your world shining.